What's up, everybody? I'm the Sonoran Desert Grower. I found this article from a MGBI, official publication of MJ Unpacked. And, you know, Prop 207, <laughs> want to scam the system? Head to Arizona. So this was March 11th. This was written or published March 11th of 2022. Arizona has a social equity problem. More accurately, the Arizona Department of Health Services, AZDHS, is allowing rampant corrupt practices to infiltrate the already small social equity opportunities in the state, according to activists. The state legalized adult use on, in November of 2020 and began sales the following January, but the rollout has been far from smooth. I spoke with Blake Humphrey and Celeste Rodriguez, two activists from Acre 41, a group advocating for a true social equity program in Arizona. They told me that the state currently has over 150 licensed cannabis companies. The AZDHS released 26 more licenses for social equity applicants, and those 26 are the final available licenses in the state and highly sought after by more than just social equity applicants. 26 is a sad number after all the years of being affected by the war on drugs and over-policing, says Celeste Rodriguez. That's a very good point, uh, Sister Celeste Rodriguez. Like, yeah, what's up with 26? What's up with that? How come we can only have 176 businesses in the cannabis space? The entire industry in Arizona right now is only 150 businesses. That's whack. This is the Acre 41 team. It's a beautiful team. All right. They are not awarding licenses so that we have a chance to establish generational wealth in our community, said Humphrey. This is very hurtful for us because of what we have have gone through. I've had family members in prison for the exact same thing people are making billions of dollars off of. That's exactly right. Like, why is it that you have to go? That's why I like the Oklahoma model a lot because it really levels the playing field. Uh, it's very straightforward. It's not super expensive. Um, the cream is going to rise to the top in that situation. Like in the situation we have now, uh, how come there is no way that we can remove people's licenses for growing boof ass weed? Like, why are they allowed to grow all this bad weed and we just have to kind of like let them keep growing because they have a license? There should be a way that the people can remove a license if you're growing boof ass weed. The low number is disappointing, but it's not exactly the source of the problem. The bigger issue comes from loopholes that allow otherwise unqualified people to team up with a social equity qualified applicant and dump them as soon as the paperwork is done. So they're just using people to get in and then that person that actually qualifies for the social equity program gets booted out. You can own a license today and you can sell it in the next minute after gaining it, said Rodriguez. This loophole has led some entrepreneurs who see nothing but dollar signs to go after potential social equity applicants. Hey, try to get qualified applic they try to get qualified applicants to sign predatory agreements in order to get access to the license. And then they convince them to hand it over for some money and free weed. The advocates say they watched a 51%, they watched, they watched as 51% percent of applicants for the 26 licenses were placed by existing dispensary owners with one company submitting over 300 applications for a single license corrupt they have no shame they you know, it's all money there's no shame when there's this time to make money at the end of the day it's not a true social equity program. It's 26 golden tickets for multi-state operators or someone who already has the money. Rodriguez explained that she knows someone in a disproportionately impacted area who almost had to call the police because they were being harassed and another person 
whose husband had to go outside with a gun and get a company seeking her signature to leave their family alone. Yeah. Um, there's so much money in it. Like, of course, they're going to go after all these. The pool is small, right? The pool of applicants for this 20, these 26 licenses is small. And they're going to come after you to take your business. <laughs> the company sent flyers in the mail to all disproportionately impacted areas and then went door to door. Another dispensary owner went to the homeless center and recruited social equity applicants from there, she said. They are shameless, y'all. No morals. And, and for what? So they can spray flower rooms and sell you booth. Acre 41 and the Greater Phoenix Urban League aren't going to sit around while social equity licenses are put in the wrong hands. They filed a lawsuit against the state of Arizona in November, but it was dismissed this February. It is somewhat a disappointing setback for the organization that just wants to see licenses go into the hands of people who deserve them. The court dismissed the case saying that the initiative does not require DHS to do any more than what it has done in the release of the final rules. While the court's ruling is a big setback for a group's efforts, they aren't planning to stop the fight. The licenses are so important to DIAs, we need to continue to fight. We want, we want what we were promised, nothing more, nothing less. Since the court will not accept the challenge to the program as a whole, the focus will now shift to specific applicants who are adversely impacted if the lottery is permitted to be held with the current application pool, Rodriguez said in a statement following the dismissal. All right. So yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess here. And again, the solution to all these problems is always growing your own. It's always going to be growing your own and taking care of it yourself, not rely on anybody to do take care of your medical needs. This this is a little different because we're talking about uh, the social equity program, which is a joke, right? The whole idea behind it is to uh, get people that were disproportionately affected by the war on drugs a seat at the table as you know a a license one of these licenses so they could start a business in the industry but the whole thing is flawed like why why are there limits on how many businesses can exist within this industry like why is that even a thing why why is it so difficult to get a license why is that even a thing? Like, I don't understand why it would be a bad thing to have like a thousand businesses, right? If uh, it is projected that in Arizona alone, the legal cannabis industry, now that recreational has gone through, is going to uh, mushroom into an $8 billion industry. And there's only 150 businesses so this is a complete joke. And um, this is why I encourage folks to opt out. Like if you're growing your own, you don't have to go to no dispensary and you can opt out of this entire system and it can rot. They want to go and produce booth. You go and you sit there with your booth. It's not going to move because I'm going to train a bunch of people to grow for themselves and we're going to educate the community and, and bring the level of, of understanding up to a, a level where these things will not be accepted. And that's the only thing that can be done is like each one teach one style. Like if I teach people, they're going to teach people and the culture will change here locally. So if you want to learn to do for self, if you want to learn how to how to become independent from the dispensary system, check out my Patreon, www.patreon.com slash the Sonoran Desert Grower. And you, and you need to sign up at the fungi tier. 
the mycelium crew gets access to uh, my Prop 207 tutorials, which walk you through the entire process from seed to harvest. And I have my grow journals on there. So you can watch me go through the entire process and and how I grow my medicine. And it's all organic. Uh, I'm, I'm never trying to sell you products that I'm making money on the back end with, with uh, associate links. And I don't do that. I'm independent. My Patreon community supports me. I'm able to speak freely. I'm able to tell you what products to buy because those are the products that work and those are the products I use and I'm not being sponsored by anybody. And that is a major problem in this space. There's so much money in it. It's so easy to buy people off so that they're selling you something you don't really need. And um, the only way to change that is for us to change it, for us to change the culture and for us to have higher standards and, and to educate uh, each other. So that's all I'm trying to do. That's why I'm covering these articles so that we can have this discussion and this discourse. And um, if you like this, this sort of um, uh, video, news coverage, whatever, uh, subscribe to the channel um, and check out my Patreon because I'm doing stuff like this all the time i'm talking about the industry um i mo i mainly do this in my patreon community so you got you got head on over there and check it out but anyway thank you for watching i'll see you in the next one